Hey everybody, I'm Jake Failing. This is Casey Crawford, and this is like old school. Doing it. Yeah, no cup of coffee on the table. I know, no cup of coffee. I'm not some thought leader in the industry or fancy person. I feel like I'm no longer qualified to interview you for these right. lots. Of uh, fired from the live streams. Uh, do not adjust your sets. We are <laughs> somehow we always do this. I feel like we've, yeah. we we were the same design, different colors, but we've got you back in the saddle. Yeah, man. Coffee with Casey. All right. So we had I say we. You had an article, or you were featured in an article recently by John Eads that talked about what is your lunch routine and what are some other local CEOs' lunch routines and things like that. And that got me thinking. Yeah, I can be John Eads. <laughs> I can do other John Eads type things. Uh, so we were going to take that theme and blow it out to like five or six questions. Yeah. We've got them just, oh, are they just happen to be written on this pad, Adam O'Dane? Okay. So the questions are right here behind me. So we'll work through that. And then we've got Jen Bates off camera as well, who will be feeding us questions as well. And I'm getting a look off camera. Maybe we won't go to Jen Bates. Maybe we will, but she's there. Jen, hi. Hi. Hey, Jake. How's it going? <laughs> I'll just be back here. Perfect. Either way, uh, we've got the whole gang here. So let's just jump right in. So in case people missed the article, Casey. Are we, yeah. We're going to do this. This is a reveal. This is the real. Reveal. What is your lunch routine? Well, you are part of it. It does not include Chuke Ball, unfortunately. Mm. So no, that was a great question by John. Uh, and uh, this is actually truly one of my best life hacks. Um, and it is working out at lunch. I got a 13 year old and a nine year old and obviously my beautiful wife. And in the mornings, I don't wanna be out of the house. Like that's kinda of like a lot's going on. We're getting the kids up, we're getting them to the bus stop and a lot of life goes on before work. Um, I'm also just not a 4.30 a.m. guy. I got some great friends wake up 4.30, go crush the workout. I'm like, man, I'm so energized. I would be smoked. I'd be like asleep underneath my desk by 4.30 that afternoon if I did that. Uh, and so, and I also don't want to do it after work. I'm not like a, a workout after work guy either because again, I, I got kids with games, man. So I'm trying to get to those games stuff from five to six and then we got dinner and some family time. So my huge hack is work out at lunchtime. It takes me literally physically like two or three minutes to eat lunch, right? Like it's probably, probably not chewing as many times as recommended, but like it just doesn't <laughs> take <laughs> that long to get through a right. meal. Um, physically, but it takes probably 20 or 30 minutes to hit a full, you know, good workout mm -hmm. and cool down, take a shower and all that kind of thing. So instead of taking that hour and, um, you know, bombing out and going and getting a long lunch, eat a really quick lunch and go work out. And, you know, the cool thing about it is what I, what I kind of share with John is it's a huge opportunity actually to meet folks and, and chat with people from just kind of all walks of life within the community, within the company. We're at my wife's gym, Rise Up Gym. We have an amazing yeah. gym here um, on site and in, uh, in our... National Sales Support Center. So a lot of us will go over there. You're over there, Michelle Donnelly, our CFO, Laura Bowles, to you know brand new um, team members that, that, that are uh, you know joining us for just a, you know, a couple months. And, and the gym's open to everybody. So 30, 40, 50 of us will get together at lunchtime. A lot of great conversations, a lot of exercise. You get to really know people when they yeah. uh, when they can't breathe yep. anymore. And uh, it, it, it's a huge time saver, huge, and just a huge, I think, way to build culture and build relationships. 100%, I think it's, it's really neat for people to see you putting where your, your money where your mouth is. So when they walk in, they see you there, they see all these people there, because you know, it's one thing for to see leadership walk around and talk about, oh, fitness is important, and thrive, and all aspects of your life, and then you walk in and truly you are like losing a piece of your soul on the, the floor <laughs> of the, the CrossFit. <laughs> yeah, right. and I'm definitely about, I'm almost at the middle of the pack, I'm like bottom, bottomed almost at the middle, like getting smoked. So it's not that I'm amazing at this, but, but we make a commitment to it. And, you know, we invite guests in all yeah, the time. A lot, a lot of time. folks come in, they want to come in from out of town. We're like, great, bring your gear, we'll meet, we'll go hit a workout, then we'll talk about things. Do you want to get crushed at lunch? Yeah. Come on, just <laughs> try to keep up with my wife. Yeah, yeah exactly. All a right. Little game, beat Michelle. So that was number one. Question number two. Whoa! Oh, biggest surprise of the year. Other than me beating you at every workout, I mean, that, that's probably a big number. That man. would be a shocker. That's, that's but a didn't happen. That What did happen this year. I mean, interest rates, right? Got to be the biggest sure. surprise. Everybody in the industry is gearing up for a, another, you know, uh, season of kind of increased interest rates. But no, they come crashing, tumbling down. Yeah. Refinances skyrocket, and man, we're back in a cycle that we've been in for the last ten years. And I don't think anyone saw that coming. But man, we've uh, we've all enjoyed it. I think it's been a uh, man. It's been a fun, a fun, busy, tough year uh, just just to staff and get ready for. It. But man, super, super, uh, super exciting surprise for the yeah. year. Yeah, busy indeed. All right. The next question. This is a fun one. Can I try one? Because I tell, yeah, you can. Because okay. I tell people all the time that you're, you're. A you know this? How you, can you see through the paper here? I'm you know? guessing. Hold on. 
Is it about brands? That was oh, aggressive. Brands you admire. Yeah, because I tell people all the time, because when they say, in fact, I had a coffee this morning where someone was like, how did you build a brand? And did you just like do this intentionally or whatever? Yeah. And I tell people all the time, I was like, Casey is actually a marketer at heart, which makes <laughs> All of our jobs here super um, interesting, um, but you're you're really good at it. I mean, you know what you like, and and oftentimes uh, what you like looks good, whether it's shirts or whether it's marketing collateral. So excited to hear your answer to this one. What other brands or companies do you admire and why? Man, they're, they're like I'm gonna throw one out there that, that probably is not widely known in the lending community, but if you are in the outdoor um, hunting space, man, you, you might know this brand. It's called Kuyu. Kuyu. It's former NFL player uh, Jason Harrison started this company. And you know what I love about this brand is it's so authentic, man. It's so authentic. Um, Jason, um, Jason passed away th this last year. Um, it was really, really tragic. There, there were issues having to do with um, concussions and traumatic brain injuries that, uh, that a lot of NFL players suffered. But when Jason started this company, he wanted to bring the best apparel in the world to hunters that were doing really extreme hunts up in Alaska and these really tough mountain environments. And so he created a brand. He said, hey, I'm going to get the best materials in the world. I'm going to uh, create the best products in the world and I'm going to sell them directly to consumers taking out all the middlemen so that hunters can afford to actually buy the best gear money can buy and do it in a way that's still affordable. And it was really all thanks to who he was and his personal passion, which was the outdoors. The company grew like crazy over just about five years with a very organic, direct-to-consumer model, bringing world-class products and really innovating and disrupting an industry. And so I love it because it's a former NFL guy. I love it because it's hyper-authentic and it's, it's true to his passion, who he is. And, and I, man, I love it because I love their gear. They, they, they do their work with excellence. It, um, I wear a lot of their stuff. You, you, you've gotten me some Kuyu stuff for Christmas. It's on my Christmas list. Mm -hmm. And I, I get it every year, man. I absolutely love the stuff. I give it as gifts. Um, because it's just so well made and, and it's a great story also as a guy you know who really had a passion do something differently and, and Manhattan has had massive massive success with it so I actually follow them I love the way they story tell they tell stories about actually being out in the woods hunting and using their products yeah and they don't they don't advertise the features a whole lot man they advertise what it does to enhance the experience um, mm -hmm. of, of the folks who are using the product so love Kuyu so is this like a subtle request to them to get you Christmas present. Yes. Yeah. So like if you're, yeah. this Easter egg here, right, is like uh, if you want to gift KC, there you go. And then two, like you, I feel like you want to be in a Kuyu magazine. I, I actually actually have been in a magazine wearing Kuyu gear. They chose okay. a picture we had on the. I mean, this is like one of my proudest okay. moments. Yeah, on the side of a mountain with a big fire in front of us, wearing their Kuyu camo, and we made Wait. their uh, yeah, we made their their best really? photos of the year. Yeah. What? Really? Yeah, this is true. Of course you did. Yeah, of course. Little, yeah. I accidentally teed up another highlight. All right. So the next <laughs> the, the next question here: Who is another leader? Ooh, or entrepreneur? So, like, you, yeah, are you like cheating here? What? About all the questions. Right leader you admire, or entrepreneur? Entrepreneur you admire. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Another one that's so it's easy to pick, you know, Steve Jobs. I mean, yeah. I, I, I've talked a lot about John Maxwell. Goodness gracious, we've had a lot of guys I admire actually on Coffee with Casey. A lot yeah. of great folks. One I have not mentioned that I absolutely love, admire, think so much of this young guy, Brett Hagler, new story. Um, this is a kid mm -hmm. who you are going to hear more about. He is innovating and challenging the way technology disrupts problems in the world, right? So rather than thinking about, hey, technology, oftentimes talking about how can technology disrupt to create. Um, a new business. Brett's actually saying, how can technology disrupt to solve massive problems? He went to Haiti um, and just saw the devastation down there and the issues with permanent housing. And it made it create a passion in him to help create permanent housing for folks in third world countries that are living in tents or, 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 or no tent at all. And uh, man, young kid, gosh, I don't think he's 30. He's not 30 yet. Um, and has built over 8,000 homes now in third world nations and pioneered the first, very first 3D printed home in partnership with, some, with a great tech company in Austin. They are actually doing 3D printing with a, a concrete 3D printer to build houses in the third world. Frankly, we do them in the U.S. if we get the regulation around it. But mm. it is, you know, it's taken what used to take days and um, tens of thousands of dollars. They're now able to do in hours for, for just a few thousand bucks. Um, so really lowered the cost to produce a home and lower the time that it takes to build what is a really beautiful home and a permanent home for folks in the third world. I love it. He's using technology to disrupt, but in the best way possible. He's disrupting people's <laughs> the problems that people are having in their lives and bringing solutions using technology to improve lives. Mm. Great guy. Like, Amazing was, emerging leader. You're going to hear a lot more about this guy. 
I was going to say, I, what I like is you disrupted that question because typically the answer is one of those guys you've always heard of. Yeah. And no one has, and I guarantee you this guy's about to get the Casey Crawford bump on Instagram. Nah, yeah, he's got plenty, he's got plenty of juice going for him. He, he is a stud. Brad Hackler, new story. Very cool. All right, next. Ooh. Interesting. Football today this versus is, back in the day. Well, the helmets like are leather different. Leather helmets. <laughs> yes. and, yeah. uh, no, this is the biggest difference for college and pro now. football players today than when you played. This could be no on more the field. wedge. No more wedge. They killed the wedge. They, that was like my. That was the one thing I, I, I used to have nightmares. Wake, I wake up. I didn't worry about any offensive play. I worried about the wedge. Oh my gosh. And uh, yeah, I mean, the kickoff. I would, yeah, lose, yeah, yeah. You get depleted every single play. Every time you ran this, the wedge, the guys would get sixty yards. And we'd all meet in the middle, and um, you know, bodies would go flying. We'd see who was still awake, and then head back to our sidelines. And thankfully, in their infinite wisdom, after concussion protocol, NFL killed that. But there's probably a more insightful, interesting angle you're looking for here. No, I think uh, <laughs> that sounds like a pretty horrible play that I would it never want to be good, part yeah. of. So I'm. It's, you it's earned your like money on that play alone. <laughs> I can only imagine. Your league minimum. So. You run the wedge, you start a mortgage company. I yes. mean, it seems like it should, it's correlated just like that. If you, could, if you could pass that test, you could pass any test. All right, what has been, Casey Crawford, your favorite out of office experience so far this year? You've been, oh, you've been pretty this busy year. this year. Yeah, this, this, this year has been a cool one, man. So we started the summer off, um, man, my, I got a 13 year old little girl, a nine year old little girl, and again, Michelle, I've been married for 19 years, and we every year try to take a couple family trips. This year, man, we did the National Park Yosemite. And yeah. I, look, commercial for Yosemite. If you haven't been, go. It, nobody's there either. Like, like, I was shocked. This is truly the most beautiful place I've ever been in the world. Nothing I've seen in the world. Got to go see some neat things. Nothing I've seen in the world is as beautiful as Yosemite. And, um, and yet, it's just not packed. I mean, it's not packed. Like we were, you, you, you drive through, it has like 12 miles of paved trails, riding our bikes, our kids. We're, we're walking through the giant sequoias, you know, and holding hands. And I just, I, I'm a nature guy. I love the outdoors and I love being in the outdoors with my family in a way that we can all enjoy. You know, California weather is incredible. We were down there by these like crystal clear streams, just reading books, swimming as a family. And um, again, it's just, it, it's amazing how um, empty the place is. I mean, they've done a great job of just preserving yeah. like, the natural beauty of it and making it really accessible. So if you haven't been there, check out Yosemite. So all this outdoor talk in Kuyu, have you ever like woken up in the middle of the night or just driving, driving home, thought, Hunting gear, movement, going with hunting gear, <laughs> like camo, like has this no, ever man, been on your? crushes it. No, like that's that's the yeah. That, no, I, I uh, no, I, I bow at their you know excellence in the hunting gear arena. I don't so, know. Yeah. What if I tried to make something like that? <laughs> <laughs> all orange. You go, crazy. yeah. Jake would go all the way the super other way. Super safety. Yeah, Kuya, so much for, safety yeah. gear. All the safety gear you can imagine, but it looks super cool. Yeah, all right, for the common man. This yes. Is, yeah. What the? You don't okay. want an extreme hunt? No. I was hoping you that be, you would list me as you'd your have favorite a, leader. You'd have a koozie with, yeah. Not your favorite leader? I'm oh, not. you're way up there. Yeah, you get enough publicity. Okay. God's king. Okay. Wow. So you, this. Shifting gears hard. <laughs> I was going to say, when, whenever, whenever this goes live, just timing wise, but this past weekend, um, I know that you were able to be a part of an event that Dan Glaze, who's yeah. one of your mentors and one oh, of your yeah. close friends. Uh, put on and you were able to speak on this there but when you talk about building God's kingdom and not your own what does that mean man that's a great question that's that's a tough one I think the 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 verse that I think about a lot that we talk about a lot of movement is uh, man love God and love people love God and love people that, that Jesus says hey these are the two most important commandments you fulfill these you do all the rest and so when we think about building God's kingdom not my own it's really having a view of loving others man loving God and loving other people not myself not 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 working man so i can fulfill all my own selfish self-interest but actually working to love others and act in their best interest so we think about the way we you know take the profits and invest them in, in uh, building schools for the marginalized and those vulnerable we think about the um, initiative we have for vulnerable children you know and the foster care initiative we have going, going on as a company we think about the way you know just having a thriving community that is not about me man it's about others about loving god and loving other people and so everything we do here from our culture, from the way we serve our customers, to the way we reinvest back in our communities needs to be about others and loving them. And I've told you a bunch of times, you've probably heard me say it, our operating definition of, of love is to act in the long term, best interest of another. So when we are working to build God's kingdom, that means we are working to love and to act in the long term, best interest of our customers, our teammates, and the communities we're a part of. Cool. Well, that's it 
for our questions. Unless are there, are there any like hidden trap door questions back here? All right, so we've worked through all the questions. Oh, no. Let's cut to Jen Bates. Oh, Jen, hey. have any questions? Jen um, yeah, yeah, well, actually, one suggestion real quick. Um, a suggestion. Uh, talk about football question. back in the day. Maybe those, like, half jerseys, you know, the movement mesh half jerseys. Oh. Like Revenge of the Nerds. Now, for shoot ball, oh. that would be amazing. I would love that. I'm yeah. just saying. Also, We what might be you... breaking shoot ball to um, the masses here. Do people know about shoot ball outside of, like, this little... We, uh, look, this might be a whole new here's the, series. Here's whole the deal. Series. This I mean, is lessons around Patrick ball. is looking at me off camera right now with this look of, don't do this, Adrian. we're rapping, yeah. and you're ramping. So here's the deal. Chukeball, not spelled how you think, look it up. It's the greatest game on pavement. <laughs> is, that, is that fair? That doesn't help at all. Two springy yeah. nets, a so, ball that's like a handball, you throw it, you going? catch it, yeah. you slap it down. Yes. What else is on pavement? Um, yeah, yeah. that's about right. It's awesome. It's crushing and we game. now play it twice a week. Movement. Oh, we, we might, can we brand the game? Can we brand the game? We can absolutely brand the game. Movement. But Jen uh, had a chance to ask movement a question, ball? and she decided to ask about um, half shirts. So they are there were any the best. Other? Ogre from Revenge of the Nerds. Yes. Um, he had. I mean, whatever. Anyways. Okay. Um, another question. Really, what do you eat for lunch in, that you can shovel down your face in two minutes? Who can't eat a salad in three minutes? Like, I, I don't. What kind of like monster salad? Who's are you eating, eating salads at lunch? Big salad. I'm picturing like three yeah. hamburgers type thing. Yeah. And... Chick fil A salad or Viva Chicken salad. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That would be I, three I, bites. I, I, yeah. Yeah, that would be three. And I noticed um, that Tim Tebow was left off the leader you admire, and I was just curious uh, about that. A if that was, I mean, uh, Tebow, there, there are a plethora of leaders that I admire that, uh, yeah, left off. Tim, who were part, we just actually today partnered with Tim down in Guatemala um, to do Night to Shine. Um, oh, with yeah. him, yeah, it's, it's an amazing event uh, that Tim puts on nationally, and, and we're actually looking at some other stages. We might partner with him to do uh, to do the night to shine. So we were going back and forth today about that, um, and yeah, it's going to be an awesome event down there. And we love Tim's leadership; he's a stud, amazing. And we partner with him on a lot of stuff. Uh, one last one, and this is just this is a two part question. One for this each of you. This could be like a great to be a Florida Gator. Just, just the way one. his face is um, working into a smile. I don't like the way his. All right, go ahead. Um, in like your lunchtime workout, right? You get to talk to people, and you oh, really gosh. get to. Are you gonna? Are you, um, do I have to say online now that yes, you can? Jen can lift more than I can. All right, yes, she can out. I wasn't going to say do it, but everything. I mean, you said no. Um, how many pull-ups can you each do? I'm really curious about that. Strict pull-ups, Jake. Strict? Strict pull-ups, Jake. I mean, maybe one. Oh. One? Casey, no, you strict. You always act like genuine surprise. I know that my triceps are massive these days. I would guess, I don't know, f 14? Something like that. Oh, I just yeah. want to hear it compared to Jake's. Uh -huh. so that's why oh, she what? said she wanted to hear your number. Double number. shoulder surgery over here, all right? Look at Grace. Yeah, double, bo both of them six times. Yeah, uh -huh. he's, got, he's yep. got a plastic elbow. All right. Okay, you know, this, this is the, um, actually, last time we're going to have Jen Bates and her <laughs> really cool flannel over the movement shirt hey, look going right now. Yeah. Brand it. Thank you for coming on, Jen. All right, and thank you for watching. Uh, this has been fun. Yeah. John Eads. We don't need your article anymore. I'm the new Johnny. No, we love John Eads. He's, <laughs> done, he, he's done a lot of great stuff uh, yeah. for us and for uh, Inc.'s website as well. So thanks for uh, spending some time having a lighthearted conversation, Casey. And thanks for watching, you guys. It's fun.